This is chapter one. I was born on Nuremberg. Can you hear it? Nuremberg. If you say it right, it hits in your mouth and you should taste blood in your words. Every person around should learn the word for country and the old language, the first language, because that is the way to all time, to time travel. You can go all the way back. My daddy was Buddy Gondawindi and he died a young man by the hands of a bygone disease. My mother was Augustine and she died an old woman by the grip of, well, it was an old world disease too. Yet nothing ever really dies. Instead, it all goes beneath your feet, beside you, part of you. Look there, grass on the side of the road, tree bending in the wind, fish in the river, fish on your plate, fish feeding you. Nothing is ever gone. Soon when I change, I won't be dead. I always memorize John 11, 26. Whoever lives and believes in me shall never die yet. Life rushed through and past me as it will for each person. Before I believed everything they taught me, I thought when all were dead that all were gone. And so as a young fella, I tried to find my place in this short life. I only wanted to, to decide for myself how I'd live it. But that was a big ask in a country that had a plan for me, already mapped in my veins since before I was born. The one thing I thought I could control was my own head. It seemed the most sensible thing to do was to live well. So in a country where we weren't really allowed to be, I decided to be, to get water from the stones, you see. After I met my beautiful wife, although beauty was the least of her, strong and fearless was the most of her. She taught me lots of things. Big thing, best thing she taught me was to learn to write the words too. I wasn't just a second rate man raised on white flour and Christianity. It was my wife Elsie who brought me the first dictionary. I think she knew she was planting a seed, germinating something inside me when she did that. What a companion the dictionary is. There are stories in that book that'll knock your boots off. To this day, it remains my prized possession and I wouldn't trade it for all the tea in China. The dictionary from Elsie is why I'm writing it down. It was my introduction to the idea of recording, written just like the Reverend once wrote births and baptisms at the mission, just like the station manager wrote rations at the station, and just like the ma'ams and masters wrote our good behavior at the boys' home. A list of words any fool can look up and be told the meaning.